Should I? Okay. Um, how many are familiar with Steam? Okay, just wanted to verify. So let's go. Um, I'm Eshed. I am a core developer in the Spring RTS engine. Um, this RTS engine is then like real-time strategy. And while we have lots of games, well, I don't know lots, but there are quite a number of games, uh, the engine itself is supplies, you know, some underlying um, uh, services that most games use. Like, it supplies some scripting language so the games can actually be written uh, by something that is not C++. Uh, it supplies physics, everything is really, like, simulated. Uh, units cannot shoot through units until, unless you, like, have a certain tag that says, do not collide. Um, so, you know, graphics pipeline, pathfinding, which is... An, endless work, uh, networking, so you can play with your friends. And currently, uh, we have 27,963 commits, so it's been kind of busy. It, the first like um, version was released on 2005, more or less. So it's been, uh, I think, April, yeah. And it's been working even before. Uh, in total, we had something like 100 contributors. But at the moment, the team, the core team, I mean, like people who touch, uh, you know, feel comfortable of touching everywhere is kind of less than two. Uh, and, and I'm like half at least, at, 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 sorry, at most. Um, so this is the engine. Um, it started um, as a reimagining of a, a proprietary RTS game, Total Annihilation, that came out in 97. By 2005, you know, hardware was quite better. Um, you could use you know, video cards in order to render stuff. Total Annihilation was using all kinds of weird tricks to render um, 3D models from a fixed camera. Uh, so TA Spring, as it was in the beginning, um, could do it from a different angle. And if you can see, this is like the same model. This thing is what there, this is here. Um, and, and it really just used the assets from the original game, but... Um, using a real 3D um, engine. Um, but time has passed, and people understood, wait, we have an actual game engine. We don't just have to port Total Annihilation as it is. So other g games were made, such as Zero K, which you can kind of see that it is similar to the um, mood and things, how they looked in uh, Total Annihilation, and Evolution RTS, which kind of moved from it, but it is similar in some ways. Um, uh, and there are games that look quite more different, went into not robots fighting robots, but um, uh, I don't know, you might recognize some of the things that we probably have no license for, uh, or <laughs> Spring 44 that, that nobody requires a license for. Um, and they play quite differently for um, Total Annihilation games, um, and you have like really different games, uh, Kernel Panic, as you can see, like entirely changed how the graphics is imagined. And it, it's still an RTS, but it's like a, inside a computer. Gravitas, which was made in a game gym in 72 hours, um, was quite fun to make. And it's a puzzle game, uh, not even an RTS. So the controls are WASD. It's, it's really, really different. Uh, we've made more games in uh, game gems. It, it's like, as a recommendation in general, if you make an engine, uh, game gems are an excellent way of testing what is fast, what isn't fast, can, what things work, where, where uh, developers um, need a little bit more help, like uh, your users. Um, so Area 17 was a, a really fun game about uh, your, uh, an alien looking for the partner who ditched it on Earth and you're like burning the entire place with doomsday weapons. And Pass Needed was just a spooky, you know, a first person um, uh, perspective game that also could kind of happen uh, and then you'd be really like testing the limits of Spring it might be an RTS engine but the, maybe the, the uh, abilities can be used in many ways but let's talk about Zero K Zero K as I showed is one of the games um, and they wanted to release it on Steam so if we look about Zero K, like the past history, the first version of it was released somewhere around 2007. Uh, and 
with games like this, the first release is not usually when people start to actually play it in, in masses. When I say masses, I don't mean like you know, the AAA games, but I mean like that whenever you come in the evening and you want to join a game, you will find people to play with. This is like a very important measurement. Uh, and this has happened in like 2009, and since then, like consistently, which is quite impressive to be more than 10 years consistently, uh, you know, finding people to play with, um, it, it, it's like one of the mo more popular games in the Spring Engine, at the moment I think it's the most popular. And in 2013 or so, um, Steam came up with the green light uh, uh, Thing. Are you familiar with Greenlight? Yes. Yeah. No, I saw a no, so I will say. Greenlight was basically because uh, Steam were understanding that they start to be in a monopoly in uh, deciding which games are released on Steam and which not. And when you are kind of deciding which games reach an audience or not, that might be a problem for uh, governments and stuff. So they kind of offloaded the work to users. Uh, Greenlight was a thing where uh, you put your game to the popular vote, and if there are enough votes, uh, it will be released in Steam eventually. Uh, like, it, it will be accepted. So, Steam Greenlight, like, 0K put the game in April 2014. Uh, it was like, in the same month, it was accepted because there were enough users to just bring and, you know, uh, <laughs> bring them to vote. Um, and then, um, just, you can see, this is in May, you know, even though you're green it doesn't mean you, you have to release the moment uh, you get the green light. Uh, Liho is, you know, a core developer of 0K, and he said, like, we have to prepare and double-check lots of things now, so probably a couple of weeks. This happened in May 2014, when people asked um, when it's going to be released. And, and then, like, you know, in June... 2014, and a little bit more than two weeks, it got released. Uh, so, so that's all. Um, any question? <laughs> yeah, so, so a, a question like that you might ask yourself is what really happened? Um, let's, let's talk about something that happened a tiny bit before that. Remember that I showed next to 0K another game, Evolution RTS. Um, so it was released the first version also around 2007, um, quite near the timeline of 0K. It never reached a big popularity. There were people playing, it has a community, it has a community now, but it wasn't in the same level. And it submitted itself to Steam Greenlight very early, like near the beginning of this um, uh, endeavor by Steam. It uh, also got greenlit in really, really fast, because the entire Spring community happily helped it um, to be greenlit. And it launched 4th April 2014. As you can see, this is very, very close to the 0K greenlight. Now, this all seems very nice, except that there was a catastrophe. Steam decided that they want to advertise games. <laughs> And on the main screen, when people opened Steam, there was this feature <laughs> about Evolution RTS. Now, you can say, oh my god, this is like the most amazing thing that can happen to a game. Not exactly. <laughs> what if, like, the game is stationed on a server which isn't even its own, it's like a server of the Spring Engine, and the Spring Engine never experienced a big influx of players, and maybe we had like some problems where every user gets all updates about all other users, if you count fast, this is O of N square. <laughs> so, when there are 100 people, okay, when there's like 500, maybe 1,000, all right, but th this goes up fast. <laughs> And if everybody and his sister from Steam comes at the same time, what you get is this. This is the uh, code developer like, of uh, Evolution RTS, the one-man army, and he wrote on the forums in 7th April 2014, please help me, I'm at work and Steam users are flooding in. Blah, 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 this is like, we had technical issues. Now, in order to like, explain how big of a problem it was, like, 
people from Spring that don't even play Evolution RTS like came and started helping and assisting people how to get into rooms, how to open them. Um, we will see later why it's going, why it's hard. If there were people uh, from other games also trying to steal Evolution RTS players into their own game, and then somebody starts a game and they see another an entirely different game. So. It was mayhem, and then you have all the people that it doesn't work, and, and you know things became slow. Um, and, and then like you can see reviews cropping up like this one, and, and this is very sad. Note: this is not a review of the gameplay itself, and you'll find out why in a second. The download for the game is simply a download for a game lobby. Oh God, why? <laughs> I hung around for around 25 minutes trying to figure out how to just start a game. Okay, th this makes no sense. Like, somebody wants to start a game, they should be able to start a game. Something was definitely rotten in spring in the entire ecosystem if somebody spends 25 minutes trying to run a game. Now, this is even worse when your game is free. Like, l let's say, you are a big company and like um, you release a game and then somebody paid for your game. Yeah, they have sunk costs. They will spend 25 minutes, an hour to learn your game to do something. If they downloaded it for free and things don't work, they will just like uninstall it and play something else. There is no sunk cost. There is no big reason for them to persevere. So um, this is the current state. Now, it was worse before that like after the release, but currently it's like 50% of positive reviews is not good. And the bad thing that it's not about the game. The game is quite, quite nice. Like it, it's not bad at all. So I talked about lobbies and, and well, let's, let's start talking about lobbies. This is how a lobby looks. It looks nothing like Evolution of Yes. This is a task client. And there's also um, the F lobby, I think. And wait, um, Spring lobby. As you can see, many people tried to write lobbies. Uh, there were like al always people unhappy with how, how the previous lobby looked. Um, and wait, I think there are more. Like this is Spring Web lobby. And then they made another version of Spring Web lobby using React. And Zero K understood that it just makes no sense that every, like, lobbies work with all games, so maybe we, they should make their own Zero K lobby, but you can still see other games like Pants, Annihilation, and so, so what is going on? And, oh, this is like, this is a new one. This, actually, I gave this talk a year and a half ago, uh, more or less, and this is a new one that somebody started making. Uh, just a screenshot, it wasn't released yet. And I also found this one. And okay, something is really, really insane. If you have like 10, I don't know how many, I probably missed some. So many lobbies. Why is the lobby even necessary? We're trying to play a game. Why can't I start Evolution RTS? And this is for, for a very interesting reason. When you start spring.exe, this is what you see. What, I don't know what to do here. It's like select a game, select a map, select, what is a script? Test the, what, what is this? This, this looks horrendous. And, and this is, I'm, I'm not even exaggerating. When I first downloaded Spring in like 2007 or six or something like this, I was sure I'm going to play single player total annihilation with Spring because nowhere in, in like the website said it is multiplayer only. There is kind of single player, but basically multiplayer. And I just run spring.exe because it made sense. And I see this and I don't understand anything what's going on. A and I just gave up after a bit. And then like I found launchers for, oh, some of the game had single player launchers in order to like replace the lobby. And, and what is like a launcher needed for? Because if you just run the Spring Exe, you just get this screen that isn't supposed to be used by any user. Instead, like there's this text file which is called a script, which says like, oh, this is the game used. There are this and that teams. Um, uh, this who against whom, like the alliance says. Uh, um, it holds an IP if you're like trying to connect somewhere. And something has to generate it, and it's not the user. So naturally, this program will be a lobby that handles all the network stuff of like, this is what's going to, uh, the game looks like, where the server. And then they send like um, the, um, 
directions to the users to um, generate this text file and start Spring with that text file. Okay, how the hell did we get to this situation? Like, it would make no sense for any place to, to use it, but th I think it's an inherent thing in uh, open source uh, software. But like, um, this is a quote um, by Eric S. Raymond. I that it misses the attribution, but anyway, uh, there's a closely related issue. However, that I don't know. Blah, 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 blah. Doing systematic user interface and user testing, and. Why is that so difficult to test user interface with end users? Is because basically users don't want to do tests. Um, and you cannot trust developers to do tests because then they use text files and, and, and stuff like this. And end and, and user testing costs money. So if you don't have it, it's, it's a bit of a problem. Or you need like lots of users. That's will agree to, to, or maybe not agree, just release a version and see what's going on. Because everybody has a testing environment. Some people are lucky enough uh, to have a totally separate environment to run production in. And this is what we al always do in Spring. We just like release stuff and see what happens. Um, so in this case, the big, um, I don't know, the, the, the huge uh, loss here was Evolution RTS. They were the testing environment for zero K. So zero K says that like a week ago <laughs> there was a disaster with the current situation. Something has to be changed so we don't release and we don't suffer the same fate. Uh, and this is why it wasn't released two weeks later. Um, so we, this is kind of what I said and like User's time is, is a limited resource, and dev's time is an even more limited resource. This is why we don't just pay developers also to, to check, because we want them to develop stuff. And, and you know, goodwill, like, you can only release so many um, uh, crap uh, uh, releases until you won't have any users to, to test them. Um, and we talked about free games having it worse. And, and even if you are improving stuff, some people will not like it because they've been playing since 2005 and they're used to things just remaining the same way. If you don't know this XKCD, check my presentation later and, and read it. It is one of the best. Um, but, but basically, users like things to stay the same. And if you're trying to get um, to new audience, you have to change the things that are broken. So there's kind of a tension if you, while you are doing the tests for uh, the new people, you're losing like veterans. And is it worth it? Are you sure that the new people will come? It's a bit of a problem. Um, it's a bit like, you know, the, from the end user perspective, they think that you're just trying to ruin their day. They think that you were in school and you thought that like, if the teacher is giving you a bad grade, that like they hate you or something. And when I was teaching in, uh, you know, uh, junior high, I was like, I understood that like the kids don't understand that I'm on their side. <laughs> and if I'm telling them something is wrong, it's because I want them to get it right the next time. I, I'm, and, and I had like, you have to tell the kids all the time, I'm on your side. I, I, I want you to succeed. So this is kind of the same with, with our end user. They just think, oh my God, the developers cannot just, you know, um, keep the things good. They have to change things all the time because they are bored. And no, we don't. We, we, we actually want things to improve. We, we are very sorry that things don't always do this. But like, uh, yes, sorry, this is like a zero case slang. Uh, I hope you like it. If not, well, nothing to do about it. Um, it it's a... Uh, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's understand what had to be um, changed uh, between, like, um, the, the, the planned release and the release. First of all, the server. We talked about the O of n square. So something has to like solve this. So we, you can actually support one thousand, two thousand. I don't know as many as might come. A lobby, of course, is a problem. <laughs> we, we cannot just use the current system. It's not, it makes no sense that you will see a list of 
20 games and, and that lobby doesn't even look like the game. You know, people look in a screenshot in Steam and they want the things they run to kind of look the same. It's about branding. It's about, like, understanding what's going on. User interface. Um, I will show in a second why it had some problems, but as a game made by developers, kind of for developers, it was very customizable to, to, to like, too much. Single player. Um, like many, many games, the, the multiplayer community is much smaller than a single player, and you kind of get, you know, a foot in the door if you have some single player um, um, presence. So, so you're not just like for the die-hard, uh, you know, uh, StarCraft insane people. And the trailer, because if you change things, like you had old trailers, but if you change things, then you need a trailer that shows how the game looks now and not how it looked before. How did we solve all this stuff? And when we, I say we, even though I wasn't in 0K, because it was kind of the entire ecosystem had to like work and change things in order um, for this to improve. Mm. How much time? When did I start? Uh, 20 minutes. 20 minutes, amazing. Um, so, first of all, there was server migration. 0K decided to just make their own backend. And like at first, there were some issues because um, why can't you just like work with the current server, which the server was good. But in the end, um, this was the, the exact tension about when you're a game that is released, you, the biggest thing you need is stability. And they couldn't just stay on the bleeding edge of the server like uh, it's in the engine. Uh, second thing, in-game lobby. Why not take the lobby and put it in the same executable? So you don't have to like run lots of stuff. And, and, and this is a good thing. The GUI rev revamp was like basically trying to standardize everything. I will show it. Uh, and the rest was compromises and luck. Be and we will go through everything. Um, first, in-game lobby, like uh, when we started talking about lobbies, as you can see, like that many people did lobbies, even more people try to like um, come up with different designs on the forums. It, it's, it's more just like funny because, <laughs> um, and, and <laughs> basically all the people were just forum post about stuff instead of, instead of, uh, you know, actually doing anything. Uh, what even, like, I, I can say that I don't understand what's going on here, but I actually made this one, so I do understand. Um, and, and what, yeah, this was like, criticism of the entire <laughs> zero K project. Anyway, this is the in-game lobby. I think it's quite nice here. And you know, there are two really, really important things. One of them, it has zero K in the top. So you know that you started the right game. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> and other things like, there's like single player, multiplayer. It doesn't like clutter your screen way too much. Only a little bit. and and. Uh, you will believe me, maybe I will show later, how like you really need very few clicks in order to get in a game. You don't need like to spy this small ready box that you have to tick in order, and, and I don't know what. And there's like, uh, they implemented a matchmaker. So that like, in two clicks you can wait in a queue. Um, if the community is a bit bigger, then you wait slow time, but now it's like, you know, a long time after the Steam release, you might wait a lot. <laughs> but uh, it, it's like, with regards to the approach, it was really, really useful in the first few um, weeks, let's say, after release. And even now, people are using the matchmaker for like, competitive playing. Um, this is like the old user interface. And you can see, like, you have lots of stuff just floating around. Um, and... They're not entirely like, um, uh, how do you call it, consistent with each other. Like this um, player list, <laughs> which is kind of in the way, is not, doesn't really look related to any of this um, uh, stuff. And, and this just floats, like I, I don't know. Uh, and this is because you, you see this little button 
this green arrow. If you click it, then you can just like move your GUI around wherever you want. And you have like, if you press F11, you can choose all kinds of widgets and stuff that you can add, you can remove. Everything was like immensely customizable. That is awesome. It's part of the reason why um, Spring's user interface is very powerful, but very ugly. Like there's a cost benefit here, but once you want to release a game, you should kind of use what power already exists and, and try to cons make things more consistent. Now, I don't want you th to think that the only thing changed was moving the minimap from the left to the right. <laughs> um, you can also flip it as like a setting. Um, but, but in general, everything is kind of better docked to, to places, and they got rid of this really, really bad button that lets you move everything. You can, if you really, really want to shoot yourself in the leg, you can kind of find it hidden somewhere in the settings. But in, in general, th this was much better. Um, and, it, like, I use it. Um, there were also compromises made. Um, this is a single-player campaign. Instead of going, you know, full red alert with stories and, and, and the plots and I don't know what, that this was kind of the idea uh, in the beginning. Uh, just somebody came up and said, okay, let's just do a galaxy map when you, like, go from planet to planet and every planet you unlock new units. Uh, and there's not story, just, like, you progress. You, you learn every, like, planet, you, you learn how to use this unit. It's, like, kind of between a tutorial and, and the single player uh, experience is not as good as like something with a story, but you can have fun here. And there are like bonus missions. You can do it on hard difficulty, which is quite difficult. Um, and, and it works. This is single player. People can play it at home before they are getting shredded by the pros in multiplayer. <coughs> and there's luck, which is basically that we needed trailers, and for trailers, you sometimes just need the right people. I think that sound is kind of not very good here, right? Or do we? I mean, you only have your... We try to use this picture, but it didn't really work. Okay, we will see, because I'll, I'll just show you the trailer, and if you don't hear anything, then I'll try to narrate it. <laughs> oh, I'm muted, yes? Give me a second. Um, yeah, I'm muted. No, I'm not muted. I don't hear anything. I think it's trying to go through. <coughs> yeah, I will see if I can change it. Ah, here. Give me a second. No, no, I think. Well, welcome back, Zergay fans. Natalie the Don. This last match for today is going to be between Diaphragm and Lamadeus on Hide and Seek. Diaphragm going for the Cloaky Bot Factory, Lamadeus going for the Shield Bot Factory. We have Caster. Uh, Caster is even, yes. We have terraforming. We're like almost the only game I, that I know that has pathfinding with terraforming. Over the northeast to see what's there. Just double check without sending their entire army to, to die. 
<laughs> anyway, this spring, aha. Anyway, so there are things you cannot always plan for, like that you will have people as talented as Dinefriend and, and Sprang that will do this trailer. Um, and, um, but it works, and it showed like the new UI, which is important. And before this team release, we did um, a smaller release on itch.io. Uh, anyone here doesn't know it? It's a smaller platform for publishing games, um, much much more limited. And it was kind of trying whether, you know, people can download it and run it and not cry. Um, and there's like a smaller risk because you, the reviews from there are not going to be passed into Steam. So it's just like a great opportunity for feedback and knowing what works. So um, it works very nicely, actually, because we worked for quite a while on fixing everything. Um, I didn't talk about the um, in-game lobby. This is actually something that I worked on a little bit. Not on the lobby itself. This, the lobby was um, someone, a uh, guy up doing. But like, you needed to change and like, have another state during uh, you know, of scripting. And, and there was like, uh, lots of uh, fun stuff. But uh, everything kind of worked, which was quite surprising. Uh, and then there was like, the Zero Case team launch in April 2018, four years after it was planned. So these things took time, uh, and, and we really spent <laughs> quite a bit on it. And, and then like, we should ask ourselves whether it was a success. So this is like the number of unique daily users and daily first-time uh, first players. And while you can see that the days after Steam are at least twice than like the all-time peak, which is quite nice, and this, this is quite... 2020, this is now. So we're already stabilized after the really, really big peak in the beginning. Uh, one thing that's important, we survived um, like the influx in the beginning. And then a week or two later, I think it was like the week after the release, that I made an error and, and like uh, broke the server during the weekend, exactly when we were supposed to like get an even bigger peak. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, but doesn't matter. We got, we've managed to get players, uh, and you know, even though we don't entirely know how many of the people coming are old players, because sometimes people used to play. See, oh, this came on Steam. I liked it back in the day. Let's go and have some games more. So, so it's a bit hard to check. But in all in all, I think this is nice. But the bigger question is about retention. Um, because all these things that we changed were supposed like, not to bring many people for the first time. You, you really want to see whether more people left or less people left very fast. Like, so retention graphs are a bit weird. But in general, I think there is a little bit of, of better time. This is like the Steam release. So you're a little, little bit better retention here than, let's say, here. And you know why here the retention is bad? Because this is when all the things were changing all the time just before the release. And this is like the question when you think, was it worth it? Um, OK. And, and this is also a nice measurement of success, which I, I think we, we have lots of user reviews. And they're quite positive. And I, I, I think I've read each and every one, especially the bad ones. And it's, it's really fun reading bad reviews. You have the ones that are like, you, they have good reasons, and then, the, well, like, why is it not Age of Empires? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, well, listen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and, and uh, I, I should really probably stop reading because it's a bit of an obsession, uh, although it's fun. So let's talk about, it, was it a success? Because when you work on something for four years, when you know, we didn't work on more interesting feature, let's say, because we wanted the stimulus to work. So, first of all, donations cover the service cost. We got more donations, which is nice. Before that, they didn't cover service cost. They even, like, they covered the 0K server, and then 0K sent some money to Spring to cover our server, which was nice. I had to ask, though. Um, but is getting maximum amount of players really our goal? Because maybe changing the game could also get more players. 
in a similar manner. Because like, there's something very, very charming, for me at least, in having this die-hard fan base, which is also why we have players for 10 years, because they think this is the best game. They're not playing it because it's free. They have money. They're just playing it because it's like almost tailored to them. Uh, and maybe maximum amount of players isn't really needed. So maybe we want more exposure to get more devs. I don't think we got even a single dev from Steam. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we did get a little bit of contribution, but I know for sure that Spring didn't get anything uh, from, from the Steam release. Do I think it was a success? I think it was. Like, I learned a lot. I had fun. Yeah. It was very, very uh, impressive. Uh, um, I don't know. Well, user-wise, like, considering our goals, I think it was quite nice. Um, but, you know, different people have different opinions. Um, the aftermath. The devs were burned out. Like, a few months after the release, there was nothing. N nothing being done. And... Then there was like all, all the talks about whether stability is more important or stability is more important. Uh, and when <laughs> these are the same on paper, but they're not. Like from the engine pe uh, people guy, uh, like point of view, the version of engine that was used in 0K had bugs and we wanted them to like um, update. But they didn't want to because these were known bugs. Who knows what new bugs are <laughs> in the newer versions? And, and there were lots of arguments and, and like trying to work out how to really, you know, keep changing the engine and keep using a, a newer version, um, which, you know, still goes to this day. Um, and what I think we learned um, is minimize uh, MTTF. Do you know MTTF? It's a uh, mean time to failure. Uh, Usually, no, I, I change it into mean time to fun. Um, like, like I said, when you have user interface or anything, you want the player from like the moment they started the exit into when they're having fun to be as short as possible. Like two clicks, fun. This is good. If it's like I have to read lots of stuff and I don't understand what's going on, not fun. This is about anything, like tutorials, user interfaces, buttons, anything. Also compromise, like... The final version didn't entirely look like what we expected. I gave as an example the single player, some things that the engine planned. No. You know, not all, everything works, and you have to put like the line, okay, we're releasing this, what, and, and we hope that it works. And, and that's all question, and this time, yeah. <laughs> Do we have time? Yeah, we have some time. Okay, yes. Uh, I was just wondering because if it's a question of genre or like... Uh, What's the link between Spring or Zero K and Supreme Commander, if there is one? Yeah, they were started being developed. Uh, well, not started, but Spring was started before Supreme Commander um, was released, uh, um, and Zero K, I think, also about that time. Um, so it's just the, the genre. Of just the genre. The, they're both like um, drawing a lot from Total Annihilation. So oh, okay. this is kind and of how it works. Sorry? There was a new word, total annihilation, that also... Oh, planetary annihilation took from... Oh, yeah. sorry. So, no, 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 that's total annihilation from 97. Yeah, and more questions? Yes. So, what about the media exposure? Did you have any articles in the media? Yes, we had, we had a few. Yeah. Oh, we, um, I was asked whether we had media exposure. Um, so, 0K uh, wasn't advertised on Steam like uh, Evolution RTS. <laughs> Uh, maybe it would have uh, fared better, but th this doesn't matter. We had some articles, not in very big places. There was actually more media exposure about 0K back in the days, um, like in gay magazines. We have people to this day that saw it in like a German gay magazine that sent CDs or something. Back <laughs> things that I think disappeared. Um, uh, there was even one article that I have to tell you. Um, it was about someone who tried to play it on like a gamepad or something, an RTS game. I have no idea, and they were quite frustrated. And I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand why. Anyway, yes. Uh, if you had to go back in time right now, would you do? Uh, would, would you do it again? Yes. Okay. I was asked <laughs> whether if I would go back in time, I would uh, do it again. Uh, and yes, like like. We've learned a lot. The product now is much better, and we had fun, and we didn't argue that much. Like, 
So it's, it's good. <laughs> yes? How many people are working on it? What is it on 0K? Zero zero uh, um, it's hard to tell. Oh, sorry, how many people are working on 0K? It's hard to tell. There are like a bunch of people kind of active. It's in much uh, slower development now than it was before. Really, really hard to quantify, but you know, there are like regular contributors doing things. Yes? Okay, how do I see the future of um, real-time strategy? I don't know about the future, but currently it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I hope this is... No, I say it is dead because just like from an observation of interest and what people want. Uh, I don't agree that um, things that... like. M will magically be solved because there's a new game that solves problems. No, I don't think so. Like, users know what they want, and they want Dota or whatever. Uh, yes, there was one there. Um, yes. Uh, were there many forks of uh, the Spring Engine, or was it always a single version linear? <laughs> uh, okay, I was asked if there were forks of Spring. Uh, there was one attempt at a fork, uh, but they um, it was an in-engine, like he was an engine developer, he did lots of multi-thread stuff that nobody could write and then like you had two versions of everything and it didn't go well and it was decided to remove this code so he got quite pissed, uh, like I understand him, but then he went away and did the version without releasing his source code uh, and like violating GPL, so um, this uh, didn't go very well because later it just it didn't keep up with our development and no game actually supports it. Um, and that's it. Do I have more time for questions?